everyone, it's Julia. Have any of you experimented with Mod Podge for fabric? Today I am going to be doing an art play on fabric, making journal covers. We're going to be designing the fabrics for the covers today in this video. And then the part two of this video will be more on taking those fabrics and turning them actually into the cover of the journals. So I hope you enjoy this. We're going to be doing a lot of painting and just do, using my jelly plate to, to doing the prints on um, white denim. I'm going to be using white denim and we're going to be using this to, to seal it to see if it, it helps prevent um, lifting of the paints and dyes and things from the actual fabric. So I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching. I'm using my large 12 by 14 inch jelly plate and using Distress Oxide stamp pads. I have not used the Distress Oxide at all on my jelly plate, so I'm kind of doing just a lot of experimenting with this. Spritzing it with some water and then laying my first piece of denim on top. My denim is cut approximately 11 by 10 and a half inches. I do want enough extra space around the, the piece to cover the journal. These are going to be um, inserts for a traveler's notebook. And here I'm just doing more some stamping using again using the Distress Oxide. This didn't turn out at all. I mean this whole this whole project is experimenting but I'm just directly stamping right on my jelly plate and then trying to lift lift it up and it didn't it it just didn't work but I'm adding more of the distress paint or, or dye and just continuing to add some layers to this piece Going in with a stencil now and adding another layer. Onto my acrylic paints. I chose three different acrylic paints in greens and blues. Went in and added a little bit more of a texture with this the circle sponge brush and did a, and lifted it. There's a lot of excess paint on here, so I'm taking my some tags and just doing um, just adding some paint to some tags. And I ended up using s several of these tags for the journal covers themselves. So you'll see that later. This is a stencil that I picked up from Tuesday morning a couple years ago and I don't even know the, the brand on it. And there's the first lifting. I really love how this one turned out. Adding a little bit more detail again with that circle sponge. I'm on to doing some testing here. I just sprayed with some water this on this white cloth to see, and you can see that the distress oxides lifted a lot. So I'm on to just putting a coat of this fabric Mod Podge using just a sponge brush and just doing kind of a, a, a lighter layer of it. This is another distress oxide print, and I am again adding the the Mod Podge. On to testing the acrylic and the acrylic also lifted and so again adding the Mod Podge to the top to seal it. I'm back and the fabric Mod Podge has completely dry and it feels it feels like it has a coating on top um, but it doesn't have a sticky or tacky feel at all. 
I'm going to test to see if I have any lifting or any color transfer um, just by taking a, a little bit of my uh, my clean spot on my cloth here and wetting it and then just wiping it off wiping it there is still a little bit on the distress oxide let me try the this is the um, acrylic paint and I'm going to do the kind of do the same thing yeah there's there's no, there isn't any there is no lifting on this at all and so that's good to know now the, these are going to be journal covers like I had mentioned before so I'm not real concerned about the lifting or I don't think anybody's going to be getting them really wet. I will be taking these over to the sewing machine now and doing collaging on them and just some interesting things. I'll be adding some paper to the top of them too. Treating these more like backgrounds and I'm going to go create and see what I come up with and I'll show you what they look like when I'm done. I'm doing these little fabric collages with a free motion technique. My feed dogs are dropped and I have my embroidery foot on and I'm just going around these fun little elements that I had put on here. This is a, one of the tags that you saw me lift some of the paint off of. This one, I love how it turned out. It, it has like a nature theme to it, and it just it's just really sweet. Again, one of the tags that I had stamped a tree silhouette on. And I love this little thing. It's called Breathe, Breathe It All In, Love It All Out. And that is a stamp that I had stamped on a piece of muslin. I changed to brown thread here, and I am outlining these leaves. I love how in free motion you can actually draw with a thread and add some detail. Again, these little leaves I have stamped using a pigment ink on muslin. Added a little thing to the back of the journal. Using the same brown thread, I'm outlining the, the butterfly. Again, being able to draw the antennas on with my brown thread. I changed to pink thread here and I'm just doing like a meander stitch to add some texture. Onto the green thread and again just adding a meander stitch. A lot of little snippets of fabric and lace go into the little collages. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to be taking some close-up photos so you can see them a bit better. And just a little bit of what I'm going to be doing in the next video. This is going to get too long, so I'm going to show you how I create and how I actually make the journal cover in the next part two of this video. But I have all sorts of folded yumminess papers that will be put inside. And these are going to be, this kind of, a, this is a, like a traveler's notebook size, which will be going right into, right into a traveler's notebook size um, journal. So, Stay tuned for the next one, and I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have a chance to create today. Thanks for watching.